What's so special about you? I'm Monkey D. Luffy. And I'm gonna be king of the pirates. Probably the biggest challenges of the show is, you know, the you know the devil fruit power because Luffy is a boy who has a you know rubber stretch ability. So his body is basically rubber, and it allows him to do many things that break the laws of physics. And you know, from a VFX standpoint, you know, we we went through many different look devs on. How do we make his arm work? How do we make his body work so that it's a power, but it feels like it could be a real power? It's ready. What is it? Or Jolly Roger? We are the Straw Hat crew. The Straw Hat was quite a challenge for us and wonderful. We had a milliner. We imported the straw, and then we had a milliner. Actually, each hat was made from scratch. It was completely woven in the workshop. We had a team of milliners, and the hats were. Because he had to do so much action in the hats, we had to have some that were lighter, some that were heavier, some that were smaller, some that were bigger. I think we made about 35 hats and we used quite a lot of them. And obviously dealing with Inaki, the actor, we had to make sure that it could be comfortable when the hat was behind his head, when the hat was on his head. So we had many different um, ways of dealing with the hat. And it was also the most iconic element, I think, costume-wise of, of the show. So we spent a lot of time until we got to what everyone thought was the perfect hat for him. Obviously, we had some decisions to make in the, the manga and the anime. His hair is kind of straight and Inyaki's hair is very curly. So we knew straight off the bat that we weren't going to fight a curl because we are on open seas and we'll be in water and trying to fight curl is, um, is not smart. So we made the ex executive decision quite early on to keep his hair as is. So the stunt team actually did a lot of work with Inaki, who you couldn't have had a better actor. His his like positive, you know, he, he he's so much like Luffy and his positive energy and what he brings to the people around him. And, you know, he was really given his 100%. So when, you know, a lot of the performances that we got with the arm led from his lead, you know, his motion of, you know, throwing the arm. And even as simple as one of the effects where he kind of, I think it's been in the trailer, everybody saw it already, but, you know, he pulls his finger to the side. Half his face is CG, but the other half is his smile and his eyes. And, you know, if you don't have that actor who can perform that effect, you know, you have just this, you know, rubber CG looking face, but you put it onto his face and hit the look in his eyes of like, I'm going to conquer the world. I'm going to be king of the pirates and his positivity and belief of his dreams. You know, a lot of that, I think, played into why the visual effects were so good. You know, there were a lot of the times when you do those types of effects, it comes down to oh, the actor didn't get it right. So, you know, we're just completely replacing them digitally and keeping the head or the face. With him, we only did that a couple times. And, you know, one of those was when he was inflating into a, a balloon, which I don't think his body could actually do that. So I think we needed to have him be CG. Are you with me? Mutiny. Um, I think specifically the red vest, we, we specifically did not want to make it to fit him perfectly because it was not something made specifically to fit that that character. We wanted it to be a little bit as though it was slightly ill-fitting to him, a little bit too big at the same time, so that it, at the same time it, it did have to feel like it was part of his character. So we had to deal with it in, it was... You know, we had to experiment with making it not fit him perfectly, but at the same time feel like it is belongs to him. So that was challenging. And of course, his shoes, which in the in the manga, he wears sandals, which we couldn't very, very specific, iconic looking sandals. And we couldn't use sandals because he, we, we, it wouldn't be safe um, for the for the action. So we had to we we discussed it over long times and we came up with designing a shoe but retaining this, the, the idea of the sandal. So we, do, so we made a shoe with the iconic shape of the sandal so that the actor would be safe and the action could happen as it did. We obviously needed to create the scar that went from where he stabs himself and 
we um, we made um, like a stencil mask, if I can put it that way, that we could make sure that the scar is always in exactly the right place. And also we had to bring about beautiful texture onto the skin just to make him feel alive and, and youthful on screen. Um, but Luffy wasn't too challenging actually. Um, he, Inyaki is kind of perfect for the role and made our job very easy. We're heading up to the Grand Line. A treacherous stretch of ocean with bigger islands, bigger pirates. And that's where we're gonna find the One Piece. So for, for Nami creating her look, uh, obviously we could not color Emily's hair and have her walking around Cape Town with orange hair. It would have been a dead giveaway that she was Nami and fans would have bombarded her. So we had to go for wigs for her and for all of our characters. Um, so what we did was we, we did loads of tests for each of the wigs and found out which color combinations worked the best to get that particular color. We did color tests with the different oranges to make sure that we got the right one that felt right in, indoors, outside on the ships. And um, yeah, so the team got knotting and um, we've knotted a whole lot of dark colors underneath and a lot of lighter colors on top to make it feel sun-kissed and natural. Um, Nami has two different wigs in the show, uh, so we kind of gave her a little bit of a hair change um, midway through as her character changed, and we tried to make little pivots like that um, for her. Again, she's got kind of a no makeup look, so she's very natural, and um, we just gave her a bit of a sun-kissed feel. I mean, her costumes were, was between being very basic and, and sim simple to being very glamorous. Which, I th which, you know, we spent a lot of time on and, of course, which she, d the, the actress, really, really carried off incredibly well. So we thought we managed that very well between being really glamorous and between being very basic and part of the crew and also, you know, quite, quite, a, quite a specific character in the crew, almost taking care of them in a way. So that was also a very nice part of, of her character. We've been making enemies everywhere we go. Buggy and the circus people was also quite incredibly exciting. Buggy's costume, I, I think that, you know, we had to, I used an old Moroccan carpet that I found in a, in a store because one didn't want it to look flat and without character. So it was basically a woven carpet that became um, Buggy's um, red and white stripy waistcoat. So there were a lot of elements like that that one had to, that were really challenging because you didn't want to just get fabric flat and look the same. And I think that was the case with all of the costumes. When he's separating, he's pretty much digital th That at those points. Um, we also did, you know, a digital head of him. So there's actually times where there's a, a newer technique that we used um, that basically is a, a, a scan head that's actually Jeff performing, as well as once we did the body scan of him, you know, we had all the parts. So we basically broke those apart and split them apart and figured out you know, working with our producers and showrunners, okay, where do you want them to split? How do you want them to split? And we basically built that and rigged him so that that could all be done. You know, we, you know, most of the pieces that you see flying are him real. We had a couple moments where, you know, we had a stunt guy with a fist that threw a fist a couple times where we just had Jeff like doing the performance where there's a point at which Luffy gets punched. And that was actually, they were like, well, should we have a stunt guy do it? And Jeff's like, I'll do it. I want to do it. <laughs> he just stepped right in and did it and we used his fist. So it's a good mishmash of a lot of CG, um, a couple real pieces in there and a lot of good planning. We had to create a nose that felt like it belonged to him, but it needs to be around red clown nose. So the prosthetic team, Yaku and his team, went about perfecting the texture and getting the nose absolutely perfect. Uh, in the meantime, my wig team were busy testing different colors of blue to get the right blue for his hair. And um, we had three different wigs for him because we knew he would have a, a couple of doubles as well. So that was quite the challenge, getting three wigs exactly the same color. Um, and then we started um, with, with Jeff, uh, who plays Buggy himself. Um, the two of us collaborated quite a lot on the look. Um, firstly, I took a lot of looks from the Color Walk. The Color Walk is a 
book that um, like, um, Oda has made himself of each character and their colors and their feels. Um, for each character and so we use that as, as part of our research to get the colors and the textures um, correct. And so the face paints that you see on buggies all worked from this color walk and um, trying to keep as true to it as possible. And then we just added a few things on just to make it feel right on Jeff's face. You know, the smile needed to be bigger because when we first did it, we did it really small. It just didn't look like it fitted and it didn't feel right. So. We played and we experimented and eventually the buggy with his iconic look was born. <laughs>